Yeah, why don't you stand by the phone until it turns off? Hello, is it going? All right, everyone, welcome to my first live stream in a while. Um, I'm normally uploading videos Saturday morning, but uh, uh, I was fishing and camping on a deserted island Thursday night, and uh, then yesterday night I was up until 1 a.m. to 1, 1 a.m. or so. Uh, editing video and I got up uh, at 5 a.m. to post said video on my other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. So I am exhausted <laughs> and uh, I thought it would be a nice change for everybody uh, to uh, be able to do some Q&A since I get a lot of messages from people, more than I can answer. Um, I usually get a, a half dozen emails and a good oh, 30 to 40 Facebook messages every day. From people asking questions and we don't have comments on our youtube channel because my kids are in the video so i thought maybe we could do a a, a q a here and you guys could get a chance to to make some comments also my wife is just off screen here uh rebecca is moderating say hi rebecca hi <laughs> excellent and uh, she's gonna help oh, help me read your comments and, and answer your comments and uh in between lulls and the, the q and I'm going to share with you my number one tip to catching more fish and some other really important tips I think get uh, overlooked. Um, so uh, first off, uh, uh, well, how are we doing on, how are we doing, Becca? We got a nice what's little crowd your, going. What's your favorite fish to catch? Favorite fish to catch? Um, I have had some really, I really enjoy catching bluefish from the surf. I, I enjoy fly fishing for trout on the surface. Catching carp on the surface is, is fun. There's lots, lots of fish that I really enjoy catching. So. There's lots of hellos from all over. Oh, good, good. I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, keeping sane during the lockdown. Uh, I know it's kind of a varying degrees of difficulty. I have some friends in Spain that are just going bonkers. They can't even leave their house. So, you know, they're, uh, so hopefully uh, all you guys that are in real uh, hardcore lockdown, you're are staying safe and keeping sane. Um, well, as, as uh, feel free to jump in with your questions uh, about anything fishing related or if you got a question for me or whatever, you know, I'll make sure to jump in. And they scroll fast, so if I miss it, just keep trying. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of comments scrolling through, so we're going to try our best to answer everyone and, and just everyone keep it friendly and, and no spamming, please, you know, just makes it harder for other people to, to participate. Um, so uh, anyway, so jumping right in, the, the number the number one tip I think to catching more fish it's it's all about picking location. Okay, uh, I get so many people messaging me and saying, "Hey, I can't catch a fish in this spot. Uh, is you know what bait should I be using, or do I need a different rod or a different hook or whatever?" Uh, you know, gear is one of the least important things to catching fish. Okay, and bait often isn't that important i mean in the carp will eat a lot of stuff you know they can be very picky but they're you know they'll eat just about anything catfish too i mean if they'll eat just about anything they, they can be very picky but uh, if you put food in front of them they'll they'll often eat it if you're not catching fish the number one problem usually is that you're not putting your bait and hook in front of a fish it's usually that simple. And so how to find the location? Well, well it, it's so different. Every location, every spot, and then different type of fishing, it, it's unique. I mean, there's no one rule for all species of fish in all parts of the world. And that sort of thing. But the number one rule I would say is knowing when to move, okay? And not staying in one place. The, the big misnomer, the big uh, lie about fishing is that it's it's for hanging out and and relaxing on the, on the bank. You know, it can be that and power to you if you enjoy that. But if you want to catch fish and, and, and not just catch a nap, um, it's not about patience. You really it's really not about patience. It's uh, you you have to uh, when things aren't working, you have to change. And when you aren't catching fish, move, go to a different spot. And this is the number one thing I see between good fishing guides, mediocre fishing guides, and bad fishing guides. And I've used, 
I've I've probably been on probably between one to two hundred fishing charters in my life. I go on a lot of fishing charters all over the world with different types of uh, uh, fishermen, and you watch and the guys that really know their stuff they they don't sit around. They sit and they they have a plan about I'm going to be fishing here for this long. And if I don't get any action, if I don't get success, then I am moving. And they have a clear definition of what success is. They have a clear definition of how long they're going to be there. And when it doesn't happen, boom, they're out of there and they move or they change something and they get out of there, you know, and usually it's, they move spots and they go from spot to spot to spot to spot until they find the action. And, and you watch and the guides that aren't very good. They've got one or two good spots and that's all they know. And they'll go to that spot and things aren't working and they just kind of go, ah, and they don't want to leave because they don't really know any other spots. You know, you, you know what I mean? It's like, they don't know what to do next. And they sit there and kind of whiffle waffle about it. And they'll go and maybe try something after sitting in the spot for like three hours too long. And they'll come back to the, well, yeah, it's, it's just a fiasco. And, and this isn't just fishing guys. We all do this, right? This is all a thing. So, oh, what you need to do is you need to think, okay, how long can I expect to sit here before I get a bite? You know, figure that out, okay? And it's different with each type of fishing. Like if you're musky fishing, you're going to be throwing a lot of lures and casting a lot before you get a bite. You know, it's just the nature of the game. If you're fishing a big trophy water for carp, you know, where you're only going to catch one carp a week, but it's going to be over 50 pounds or something, you're going to have different expectations, but figure out how long should I be here before I can expect to have success. And once you reach that spot, if you haven't had success, do something else, go somewhere else. Don't just sit here and, and wait. And, and, uh, European anglers, particularly carp anglers are really bad with this because as the way they're, they're limited. Lots of times you go to a lake and you reserve like a peg, one spot, and you chum it up and you for like days and you've invested so much time setting up all your gear in that spot, putting all your bait in that spot, that moving at that point is just too much. And it locks you down into one spot and that can be a real big mistake. You wanna stay mobile. And, and, uh, and you look at, at uh, professional bass anglers do this too, right? It's with lure fishing or bait fishing, it's the same thing. Professional bass fishermen, they look at a spot and say, okay, right there up next to those lily pads, that's where a bass might be. They cast and they say, if I don't get a hit when I cast there, I'm not going to cast twice. You know, they'll, they'll cast, they'll reel it in, nothing happens. They're, they're down the bank another few feet trying the next spot. You know, oh, it's the same, same sort of thing. The professionals don't sit there and cast at the same lily pad seven, eight times waiting to see if a fish a fish is going to bite. They, they try it. It didn't work. They move on to the next spot. The same thing with cat fishermen. And, oh, we got, we got the boys over here. Hey, babe, you want to? Yeah. Yeah, well, you want to go? take your, but, um, okay. Hold on. The, there's a couple nice, um, yeah, you got some, we got some comments. Yeah. George Drennan said, have you ever thought of running trout lines? And he did a, a chat and then, um, Oh, okay. Trout lines. And right. then really quick before I run, um, and then who's your back outdoors we get a did a nice super chat and said lever channel come see us and collaborate on the white river in indiana oh okay well well thank you very much oh, Who, who's hold on uh and then mark sporky how would you catch carp that are busting on the surface that was another super okay chat. so i need to say so okay couple couple things you want to come out to where is it where do you say um white river in indiana oh indiana okay oh geez. there's so much traveling i'd like to do right now but in Unfortunately, I I have tickets to Louisiana that I'm really really worried about. We're gonna do a week like a uh, uh, bayou hunting, fishing, camping trip, and I'm that may not happen. We've got tickets to Spain for Wells catfish. I've got tickets to uh, Croatia for a bunch of fishing to do there, and tickets to Northern Italy <laughs> for August. I hope Northern Italy is like still like uh, doing okay. I hope it's doing okay by, by August, but I, I got a lot of travel planned and I'm really worried about it. Okay. I'll, I'll be back. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Sorry, chatters. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> My moderator has to go take care of it. If you want to bring Jacob in here, that's fine. <laughs>
Um, so about that. Hold on one second. I got it. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so to answer those questions, have I ever thought about doing trot lines? And, and I have done trot lines, but I'm mostly a catch and release fisherman. My family doesn't like eating that much fish. Uh, and, you know, I just, I, I've got freezers full of alligator and wahoo and catfish and stuff. like. I really don't need more fish, right? And so, oh, catch and release trot lining has never really appealed to me all that much. Um, I have tried doing trot lines for bait, for bullheads, um, where I basically take like a one pound lead Okay, a real big old lead, and I tie it on the end of a piece of paracord. And off the paracord, I've got hooks going with little pieces of a worm or shrimp or whatever. And I'll sit on the bank, and I'll swing it and chuck this, this piece of paracord out there, and it'll shoot out with like 15, 20 hooks on it, and let it sit and just kind of feel it until you start feeling lots and lots of hits. And uh, then reel it in as a way to try to catch bullheads for flathead bait. And so I, I've trot lined for bullheads to try to catch more more bait, but it was a lot of it was a lot of hassle, frankly, and it got snagged up a lot. It was just a really high maintenance way of catching bullheads when, frankly, it, it was not that much faster than just sitting there with a with a rod and a bobber and some worms. You know what I mean? So. Um, and that's been my experience with trot lines is they're not, they're not better at catching fish than running rods and reels. Uh, you know, if you're in the right spot, you catch lots of fish, you know, and you know, the, the, so I don't know. I'm that, that's been my limited experience with trot lines. Um, uh, the other one, uh, the other question we had was about, about uh, um, how to catch fish that are carp that are busting on the surface. Well, uh, it, when carp are, are breaking the surface, there's a couple different things going on. If it's in the springtime and they're they're not just jumping, but they're kind of doing this, you know, splash on this uh, up in the shallows. It looks like almost like they're trying to swim out of the water or up in up in the reeds. That's spawning, right? And when the fish are uh, when the carp are actually spawning it's hard to catch a carp. That's one of the few times that they aren't just eating, but immediately before and after spawning, they're gorging, okay? Because it's like before and after they're fast, you know? And so you, if you see carp spawning, there's usually a lot of other carp nearby that are either are, are pre or post spawning phase and you can catch them. So if you see a carp busting out of the water and stuff like that, um, uh, what I do is just fish in slightly deeper water or, or for uh, the other fish that aren't quite spawning yet. Now, you have to be careful in some parts of the world, like in Europe and stuff like this, uh, fishing when the carp are spawning is forbidden. You know, um, some places shut down and a lot of private landowners really don't like people fishing. So, you know, pay attention to your local rules and stuff about that. Now, if carp are just jumping clean out of the water, they're not like thrashing about, that can be a number of things. They often do it in the early morning and it's, I'm not sure why, but if you see carp slurping stuff off the water, then throw some bread out there and, and try to catch them off the, off the surface or dog biscuits. If you're in the UK, that they have little kibble style, style dog biscuits that work really good for fishing off the surface. But long, long uh, story short, that's how uh, you fish for a carp that are up on the surface. I'm in back wants to know what a good budget rod is. A good budget rod, um, a good budget rod is one that's slightly more than you can afford. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, 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 there's a lot of them. It, frankly, the only reason why you need expensive rods is 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 really for versatility and for feel i mean um you you can catch fish just fine on on cheap rods uh, the rods are really not about catching the fish it's more about casting right like you can reel in a fish with a with a two by four and a piece of string tied to the end or a broomstick or no rod at all i mean it's you really don't need the rod to fight the fish at all um it's for casting and, and so 
depending on what you need to cast depends on what you need uh, as far as rods go. Now, most of us aren't you know, doing anything crazy. We're using normal sized rigs. We're only casting you know, a few dozen yards from the shore or off a boat. And so it really doesn't matter too much. Um, uh, the Shakespeare makes a whole line of cheap rod and reel combos um, for catfish and, and carp for, for you know, under, under 10 pounds, under 12 pounds fish. The uh, Big Water Alpha Shakespeare, Big Water Alpha is like 25 bucks for the rod and reel combo. Um, the Ugly Stick GX2 is a step up from that. It's a pretty decent rod and you can get the combo for 40 or the rod but for 30. The combos are always going to be a better deal. Um, uh, tangling with catfish makes a good like forty dollar rod. Um, if you want to get up into the seventy dollars, I really like the Whisker Seeker rods for catfish. I mean, it just kind of depends on what you need. But Ugly Stick and Shakespeare are just good, good brands. But I mean, I'll walk into Walmart and find what's nineteen some nineteen dollar rod and reel combo. Or the little dock demons for like nine to 15 bucks. Those combos are really good, but they're just little short guys, so you can't cast too far with them. Uh, Lake Trout Mafia says, do you think using a Carolina rig or a sinker slide on a Santee, Santee Cooper rig for Blue Cat would be better than a sinker hooked directly to the swivel? Uh, um, uh, well, the Santee Cooper rig traditionally is a no, no roll inline lead. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, it, it's the 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 only difference with the when you're when you're the Santee Cooper rig and and the, and all that stuff, it's for dragging for catfish. Okay, um, it's not for casting out there and just letting it sit. What it is 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 you're dragging your gear across the bottom, or you're trolling it behind a boat, or you're casting or retrieving it right. And, and there's a couple ways to do it. You can put a no roll lead in line and that red lead will kind of do like this through the water column. Um, but that'll get your hook very close to the bottom because as uh, the lead's kind of bouncing across the bottom and your bait and your hook are on the same plane as the lead. If you use like a three-way swivel and use like a no snag uh, uh, lead or like a dragon tail or something like that, uh, or you're using a dropper loop, then you're getting your hook off the bottom. So you're reducing your snags and you're elevating your bait off the bottom so that you're putting that in the face of fish that are off the bottom. So the question you know, of which lead to use when you're dragging or drifting or, or that sort of thing, the, the two things you look at is how snaggy is it and where in the water column are the fish are at. And you choose a lead that's going to get you above the snags and right on face level with wherever the fish are at. Um, okay, there's a couple more. Um, by the way, my wife is doing a bang up job. <laughs> she's she's wrestling monsters and and she's moderating and she, she's a wonderful, a sweet woman. This is how she's spending her Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how would you catch carp that are busting on the surface? Oh, oh yeah, we, we did that one. Oh, we did that one. Sorry. Um, something about hold on just a second. What's your view on kayak fishing? What's my view on kayak fishing? I am pro kayak fishing. There you go. I am. I am for it. And, uh, and Matt Smack Evans struggles to catch big fish in Colorado. Yes, because he's in Colorado. Because so. Okay, we'll deal with those two things. Uh, um, how do I feel about kayak fishing? I love it. It's great. Um, just get a seat that that fits your your lower back needs. Um, that's the worst part about being in a. The two bad things about being in a kayak. Or you can't see very well. You're so low to the ground. It's hard to see down into the water. What's it's harder to read the water, um, and then and the seats are, are killer. Those those are the two worst things. Of course, you know you don't have as much distance, but the accessibility is great. The affordability is great, and the fish are just so much fun. You you pull that fish up, and you got a ten pounder right there next to the kayak. That's so much more exciting than standing up on the pontoon boat and seeing the ten pounder down in the water. You know, it's just you're just right up in the action. It's, it's like watching a movie on the big screen. It's just cooler, you know. So I really love kayak fishing. And here in a few weeks, I'm uh, ooh, maybe this week. I, I think this week I need to do some kayak fishing and go shad fishing and stuff like that. So I'll probably take like, Jacob or Nathan to do that. Um, so, but yeah, I love kayak fishing. And um, 
the other question was uh, somebody was asking for help because they struggled to catch big catfish in Colorado. The, the problem is you're in Colorado, okay? And, and that's uh, that's only 50% a flipping answer. The, the truth is location is everything, okay? Everyone sees me pull out these huge fish and like, oh, that's so amazing. Well, I'm in Virginia. Virginia has some of the biggest cat blue catfish in the world. And, and we've got great flatheads. We've got great channel catfish. It's just a great place to go fishing for catfish. Um, you know, you go you go on these big rivers like the Kentucky and the Ohio and the Clinch and all this stuff, and you're going to catch big, big fish. Um, Colorado just does it because of the elevation and, and and everything. It's just it's a harder place to fish. And if you catch a ten pound catfish in Colorado, that I would be more proud of that than catching a thirty pound catfish in Virginia. Honestly, it's just it's just a harder place to fish. Um, but the the only way, and I don't know Colorado that well. I fish Steamboat Springs and Saratoga Springs and a few other places. Honestly, the you just got to get out there and explore things. And, and this video is about my number one tip for catching more fish is location and knowing when to move. If you go and fish a lake half a dozen times and you're just not catching fish unless you're watching and seeing other people catching lots of awesome fish at the same lake go try another lake there's lots and lots of bodies of water i go to around here and they just stink they're horrible places to fish they just don't have a lot of fish in them and there's nothing you can do about it there's just a massive lake with very few fish you're not going to catch a lot of fish and you know um and and some places the fish just aren't big you know, for a lot of reasons. So now if you just aren't getting success at one body of water, go to another body of water and just try a lot of different places and you'll struggle for a while, but then you'll start to find little honey holes and, you know, look at Chris Flores, right? He's down in New Mexico doing a catfishing guide service. You know, New Mexico is not known for its trophy catfishing, but he finds some really awesome catfish down there and it's impressive. And, and he's done that because he spent a lot of time going out into the sticks and out in the middle of nowhere, exploring and trying new places. And when it doesn't work, he tries a new place. And he, over the years, he's accumulate, accumulated some really awesome honey holes. And that's what you're going to have to do in Colorado. So. Um, MD Shriek um, said, how to stop suckers from biting while carp fishing? How to stop suckers from biting when carp fishing? You don't. They're awesome. I love catching sucker fish. Just reel the suckers in. And uh, th though I, I joke about that, but um, that's actually a really good way. We have the same problem with, with catfish here in, in Virginia. If you go fish for carp, you're going to catch catfish. And some places, there's so many catfish, it's a nuisance. And so what you can do is you throw out your chum and you start getting a bunch of catfish. Uh, so you can go out there and just chuck a, a couple catfish rigs on top of your chum pull in really quick, boom, 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 in 30, 40 minutes, you pull in three or four catfish, and then suddenly the catfish go away. <laughs> you know, even though you're catching release fish and you just kind of clear them out, and then the carp will show up. Um, and so, oh, if you have a lot of sucker, one strategy is to just go and target the suckers. You know, if you start getting a lot of sucker bites, put on a rig, a smaller rig, specifically for suckers with little earthworms on it, chuck it right over your bait, reel in a couple suckers and then suddenly the suckers disappear and then the, then the carp have a chance to come and get your bait that's one way to do it beyond that um i'm not uh, too much i would say maybe use um a longer hair rig and bigger baits is the other option you know suckers are usually smaller than carp i don't know about your area but usually the carp average you know 10 to 20 pounds here and the suckers are like you know two to three pounds and carp have those big mouths so use a longer hair rig, okay? And so what'll happen is if a carp uh, uh, sucks it up, he'll get hooked because he has such a huge mouth, but the, the sucker will inhale the bait and mouth it. And because their mouths are smaller, the hair goes in, but the hook point doesn't make it all the way in. Okay, so using a longer hair is a way of filtering out smaller fish. And of course, using bigger baits as well. So you can use big, huge boilies or something like that and a sucker won't be able to uh, uh, eat that, but you know, 15 pound carp can suck down a boilie that big, no problem. So, you know, you can up to bigger baits and then um, if smaller fish are stealing your bait, use an artificial bait or um, a, a boilie on your hair rig because they're tougher and they're harder to steal. Oh, who taught you all you know about fishing? 
Uh, no one person, you know, my dad took me fishing a lot and, um, but most of it's just going out and fishing a bunch, you know, just learning from trial and error and then uh, going with lots of guides. Uh, I, I learn something every time I go with a fishing guide, you, you know, you can always learn something from a professional who's doing it day in and day out. Hey, Smack Evans caught a 24 pound channel catfish already. S uh, Smack, uh, Smack Evans caught a 24 pound channel catfish in Colorado. Congratulations. That is a massive channel catfish anywhere. Do you um, ever do bass or pike fishing? And there's also been questions about like catching and cooking walleye and pike and a big long list that I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've done a lot of bass fishing and uh, a little bit of pike fishing. I actually wrote an article for In Fisherman Magazine when I was in law school about pike fishing in Alaska. And, and uh, we used to go uh, pike fishing up uh, in Alaska where car, uh, pike are about on par with carp. You know, they're you know how a lot of people don't respect carp here in the lower 48s? In Alaska, pike are treated that way. They're kind of a trash fish, garbage fish. That stupid joke about how do you cook a carp? You know, you put it on a cedar plank and you throw it away and eat the plank. They used to tell that joke about pike. Um, and I was taught growing up that if you catch a pike, you're to kill it, throw it in the bushes. Because carp, pike are garbage, you know. Now you can't eat them. They taste terrible. And none of that's true. I mean, they're, they're just a fish, right? And they taste fine and they're fun to catch just like any other fish, you know. Um, but, uh, uh, to get back to your question, why I don't, you don't see me doing a lot. And it's because I have young boys. Um, I try to involve my kids whenever I can and take them along. And, um, they, they're just, Tommy's almost getting old enough where he can start bass fishing, you know, casting and retrieving. You know, bass fishing takes skill. If you can't cast accurately, um, you're not going to catch a bass. It's all about your casting precision. You know, uh, you know, if you're good at it, you've got to cast towards the shore or cast towards the snag, and, but not put it in the snag. And, and, and doing that with little kids is hard. Um, I've live bait fished with bass before with the kids, but um, with cat fishing and carp fishing and bait fishing, I can set up the rods, cast them out for the boys, put them in rod holders, and then the kids get to reel it in and they get to participate. And it's really easy to watch my kids and watch the rods at the same time. With, with lure fishing, I can't do that. I've got cameras, I've got rods, I'm doing both at the same time, and I've got kids. It's it's just like one thing too many. Um, so as they get older, I'm doing it more and I'm finding ways to do it more. Um, and when I have just one or kid with me or something, there's, there's, little, there's ways, exceptions to the rule, but that's why you don't see me doing it much anymore. It's just because uh, as my kids, uh, it's, um, it's easier to take them bait fishing. There were several people who did very generous donations like Dennis Ham. Oh, Dennis Michael Ham, thank Gar you. Mar Michael Garcia. Thank you, Marco and, Garcia. And others. I'm sorry if I missed people. People have lots of great questions. They just scroll through. So yeah, a lot of people scrolling through, so it's, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it comes with a thumb. How do you find a good trout stream? How do you find a good trout stream? You go online and you steal people's spots. That's how you find it. <laughs> oh, or you follow the, the stocking truck around like, like some people do. There's a reason why they do it. It works, you know? Um, other than that, other than those two morally questionable tactics, um, uh, um, the, the thing is just a lot of research. It's the same with any type of fishing. I, I go online, I look at fish surveys in the Department of Fishing Game and resources. Um, you, you go on Google Maps, you look up locations and try to see what looks promising. And then you get in your car and you spend a day or two just walking up and down a stream, casting once or twice and moving on and just, you know, looking around and putting your putting your hook in the water and seeing what happens. And I spend a lot of time exploring uh, new waters. And frankly, about half the time, it doesn't work out. I go there and there's just nothing. But uh, you find all sorts of different things. I've had lots of times where I go looking for a trout stream and I just go and there's just a, like crazy ton of smallmouth bass. And I'm like, this is the best smallmouth bass stream ever. Or, or um, like you saw me do the bowfin catch and cook video. I was actually hoping to catch um, like some carp uh, and I was uh, kind of like gearing up for catfish and carp and that's the normal thing. And I go there and instead uh, while I'm exploring this new river, I find this amazing bow fishing spot. And uh, I've just had loads of fun uh, this one new little bow fishing spot. So there's no, there's no, there's no uh, 
uh, unless unless you're gonna follow the stalking truck or you know go around and try to steal people's all spots, which you know can can produce results. Um, unless you're gonna do that, you just gotta get out and and put in the legwork. So. Um, other than live bait, what's your go-to bait for catfish? My go-to bait, other than live bait, would be dead bait. But find whatever fish the catfish are eating in that area and fish it live or dead, but fresh. Oh, somebody a while back asked how you catch shad without a, without a net. So how do you catch shad without a net? Um, the, the, the short answer is you don't. Uh, and this applies to gizzard shad, which are a true shad. Um, Threadfin shad, uh, uh, American shad, hickory shad, uh, uh, those are all types of herring that will actually bite hooks. So you can catch those on a rod and reel, uh, but they're not a shad. Um, moon eye, skipjack, you can also catch uh, on a rod and reel. The, the short answer is, is you, you can't. However, I think you can. I just haven't been able to prove it yet. And it's been on, it's, it's been one of these projects I've been working on for a while over in Brazil, China, Russia, and Japan, some other, you know, other places, uh, big head carp and silver carp are caught using hook and line and bait. Then they're plankton feeders and everyone tells you, you can't catch them on hook and line because they're filter feeders. They just swim around eating little tiny microscopic plankton and zooplankton in the water which is what shad do as well. It's also what paddlefish do as well. And everyone says you can't, you can't uh, catch them on bait. You can't catch silver carp, big head carp, paddlefish, gizzard shad because they're filter feeders. But over in these countries, they're catching um, using very unusual techniques. Like they're catching filter feeders, these big head carp and silver carp. So oh, I, I have not had a chance to really a, use their gear and their bait and their methods and try it out. But I've, you know, I've researched it a lot and, and there are people do it all the time. So I have a theory that you might be able to do the same thing with gizzard shad and, and, um, uh, paddlefish, but this is just a theory. So anyway, maybe in future videos, I'll get a chance to, to do that. But, uh, I'll get my hands on some, some of those baits. Yeah. Hey, Lake Trout Mafia, would you prefer to use fresh cut bluegill or frozen cut shad for blue catfish, specifically fish in Care Lake, Bugs Island, and Virginia? I would use fresh fish, fresh bluegill over uh, frozen shad. This gets fresh. Is, I think fresh trumps the species. I think they'll, they'll, they'll eat either. Yeah. I like um, bluegill stays on the hook pretty darn well, too. It's, it's a little bit tougher, especially than frozen fish. Frozen fish, if you don't freeze it well, it gets mushy and falls off the hook really easy. That has to do with how quickly you freeze it. The faster you freeze fish, the firmer the meat will be when you thaw it out. So mushy bait, that means you froze it too slow. Um, Ronald Garl asked, one of the sport the channel, let's see. I saw you use dock rods sometimes, but brand rod and line test you're using for those. Oh, for the dock demons? I assume you mean for dock rods, you're talking about the dock demons? Mm -hmm. Um, I use the line that comes with them, which is like eight pound mono, or if I'm doing my crazy, let's catch a 30 pound flathead on a dock beam in videos, then I use 20 pound spider wire. Um, Nathan's mortal enemies on. That makes me chuckle. <laughs> Nate, hello, Nathan's mortal enemy. <laughs> um, oh, there's lots of great questions. They're just going so fast. Um, look, look, look at my look at my sweet wife doing this. She's she's sitting here in the cold garage on her Saturday, trying to read all these comments. Wow, they really are scrolling by. I miss a lot. Okay. There's great questions though, and lots of people around the world asking if you're going to come there, like South Africa. Oh, I want to go to South Africa. Asking if you've been to Scotland before, which you have, and all sorts of. Things. Listen, South Africa boys, man, I, I want to go and catch a sharp tooth catfish, and I think it's Vundu or Vudu. Uh, you know, catfish and some car. Oh yeah, <sighs> so many places. So little, so little time. Um, that and the truancy laws in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's lots of great questions. I just forget them. Scotland. Oh. Yeah, we're going back to Scotland. That's <laughs> happening. I have a, some great ideas for video. I want to do some some. Uh, I wanted to do a, a traditional uh, British. Um, 
you know, like pheasant shoot, you know, like, you know, they do the drive and everything. You just wear a lot of tweed and shoot stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I want to do that. How do you keep the jello pack bait from getting too soggy or too tough when you're making it? Uh, how do you how keep the jello bait, the pack bait from getting too soggy or too tough? This is this is easy. It's just how much moisture do you add, okay? Um, and it does not take a lot of moisture to properly hydrate the, the jello pack bait. Well, the ponco takes very little moisture. You add the, the juice that's in the, the can of corn, and usually that's enough by itself without adding any other or water. If it gets too mushy and it's the, you pack it together and the ball's too soft, add a little grits or instant oatmeal in there to soak up the moisture. Um, if it's if it's too stiff, um, you then add a little more water. Um, you can also add a little jello, like the jello powder itself will firm it up. So if you add too much uh, jello, it'll get it'll start to set, set up like the jello is like, uh, yeah, it'll start to set up on you. But once again, you can just add a little bit more ponco, add a little bit more water. Um, thanks, Trendkill91. Thank you, Trendkill91. <laughs> yes. A bunch of people thinking we should homeschool the kids or asking if we, <laughs> we do. Or... Let's see. I am I run a law firm. I've got to go to court. I've got two YouTube channels with two videos a week. Uh, my wife, my works. I also volunteer at my church. Yeah, let's homeschool the kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's great that people who do the, the pandemic is is, is oh, hard good. <laughs> for the schooling. You know, uh, yeah, no, no. I know when I I know when I bite off more than I can chew. That's more than I can chew. Well, I can chew Plus, I barely graduated from high school. I am not. I shouldn't be nowhere near my children's education. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did get a law degree, but it was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a tough road. <laughs> Barely graduated from public school, ended up with a doctorate. Whatever, you know. <laughs> Don't let anyone go to law school, trust oh, me. There was a night Caddyshack catfishing said something nice. Thank you. Thank you, Caddyshack catfishing. <laughs> that lots of people say. Jacob, do you want to be on the live stream? You want to come? Do you want to be on the video? Come here, bud. Come here. I'm showing the French a blankie. No. Yeah, he's just going to hang out oh, off camera. Oh, you can come? Somebody asked if I've been involved in the statistics for the pandemic. I haven't, but I know people who have. Yeah, Becca, somebody asked if Becca's been involved in some of the stati pandemic statistics. Um, and my wife has not, but she knows the people who have. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll, here's a shout out. If you are a young person thinking of a career, um, statistician is a wonderful, wonderful profession. Tell me, Becca, I didn't know much about it. But basically, anyone who uses data and tries to interpret what data means, they need statistics and a statistician. And so Becca has done all sorts of things. She's worked for uh, uh, civil engineering firms, for hospitals. She did large supercomputer data, DNA analysis of Peruvian mummies. Um, she's uh, done lobbying up on Capitol Hill. Um, uh, she works in a trade organization. She taught at universities. Um, she's just had an amazingly diverse career. She's, she's turned down some pretty cool jobs. The Department of Fish and Game in Alaska wanted to hire her. She, she turned that job down um, because all the, the data they, they collect on animals. And so imagine, imagine working for Fish and Game in Alaska, all the fun things you could do. Oh, yes. Uh, she she got a job doing infection control in a hospital. Her job was as to look at the data of people who got sick in the hospital and try to track the source and find out what was making them sick, whether it was odd chance or it was a particular person or a piece of equipment. And she would use mathematics and statistics to track them. How cool is that? I think that's way cool. She turned she turned down a job as an epidemiologist, which if she had done that, she would definitely be in the hot and thick of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad people do it. It's, it's important. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. they're going so fast. Um, yeah. Mitch wants to know when you're doing an exhibition in the DC Tidal Basin. Oh, oh, you know, here's here's the thing: is like going to the catfish conference and doing the fishing events are are you know it's 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 a bit of a sacrifice. You know, oh, I like I my time is at a premium, and you know when I'm not quarantined. Um, my Saturdays are when I film my, my a lot of my videos and, and I do my editing and and it's it's time consuming. I can count on my left hand the number of free Saturdays I've had in the last three years. I mean, it's just, I don't have free Saturdays. And 
And when I do the catfish conference and I do the tidal basin fishing events, those videos never do well, um, to be perfectly blunt. They're fun for those of us who participate, but it's kind of like watching other people's home videos for those who don't, you know? And so I, they just never have done particularly well. So every time I do one, it's, I just know I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much, it's like taking one of my free days off. And so I, you know, I know it means a lot to people. And so I do it for that reason, but I just can't do a ton of them. And so, um, I, I probably just won a year and, uh, we'll, we'll kind of see hey, what happens. Um, I'm, I'm actually a uh, toying with the idea of doing uh, like a combined outdoor boys, cats and carp activity where like i just like reserve an entire campground and invite people to come oh you you see that you see that the gar head up there yeah is that cool yeah got my dehydrated gar heads up on the wall finally it's looking cool what about the best bait for small channel cats in a damn small river with minimal current so you're looking for the best damn channel catfish bait. Yes. Okay. <laughs> With small cur something about With small no end. <laughs> yes. Daddy. Daddy. Um, I don't know that being in a dam makes a difference. Yeah, yes, yes. The yucky stuff? Yeah. Say hi. Come on, say hi to your friends. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no, we can't we can't play in that right now. It'll tip over. You wanna you wanna be on the video, Nathan? Take it, Nathan. Okay, you're gonna just distract Mama. Okay, to Tommy's Tommy was supposed to watch watch the boys, and now all the boys are here, and Tommy's watching TV. So. Daddy, Daddy's uh, gone. So where is Tommy? So I didn't know. Okay, oh, all right, Daddy. all right. Daddy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you know lakes versus rivers versus dam versus reservoirs i don't think that changes your bait selection what does change it is what are the fish eating um are they eating you know uh, shad or moon eye or minnows or chubs or clams or you know that sort of thing but channel catfish um are much more omnivore especially small catfish and they eat a lot of vegetation if you ever notice that when you catch a fish their poop is full of seaweed. Um, people don't realize this, but channel catfish and blue catfish, they eat, the young ones eat a ton of vegetation. Um, so my Ponco, oh, a sweet corn bait catches a lot of catfish and, you know, you, you know of course, liver and other things, um, sweet corn. I mean, you can, you can catch cat, channel catfish on a lot of stuff. And if you're not, if you're targeting trophy channel catfish, I would say use natural baits. Um, because the big ones tend to be exclusively predatory, but the smaller fish there, I mean, it's, it's a, it, just try a bunch of different stuff and it kind of, it depends. Um, it kind of depends, but I did a video on all my top favorite catfish baits and there's loads of ideas. Just start experimenting. Um, oh, I missed this one a while back. So do you ever fish in Maryland? Um, what about the Conowingo Dam? Oh, Conowingo Dam. Um, yeah, I've, I have some friends who've recommended it. I hear it's really snaggy, but but a good place to fish. Um, I do fish in Maryland occasionally. Um, but, uh, you know, oh, uh, just, yeah, occasionally I do fish in Maryland. Yes, and I, and I, might, and I, I would like to go to the Conowingo Dam sometime. What's your favorite Walmart bait for catfish? Uh, if you want to catch a good Walmart bait, ignore the fishing section go to the grocery section um i do the my ponco sweet corn iron bait works good for catfish yeah for catfish it, I, I, my biggest channel catfish at 23 pounds was caught on on that um little number six hook with a piece of sweet corn on it you know um hot dogs with jello chicken livers chicken breasts soaked in garlic um I would take all of that stuff all over any of the prepackaged uh, stink baits, or the gulp catfish nuggets, or or especially the, the those little dehydrated shad. I don't know if anyone in the history history of the world has ever caught a fish on Rusty's dehydrated shad. Um, it's like one of the worst baits ever. <laughs> I usually don't say that. Uh, oh, if you've actually caught some fish on that, put it in the comments just so I can know that it's physically possible. But I've never caught anything on those. So ignore the fishing section. Go to the grocery section for your bait. Um, what's the best beginning cast net? 
Um, I would get one that's uh, about as long as you are tall and start there. Um, and, uh, you know, six feet you know, for most people well, uh, and, and start there and just, just practice with it. Each side, the technique for throwing is, is you use the same technique for each size cast net, but it, it, the execution's different for each side. Hey, there's a good dad joke. Since there's five of us nickels, does that mean we're a quarter family? Ha 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 ha. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's just fun. That's That's fun. fun. Um, uh, yeah, there's lots of good questions tonight. Oh, some people want you to go back to the island and look for the abandoned. I want to go back to that. That was that was such a disappointment. And and the the worst part about the whole thing is like the the waves really got sketchy at this little this one section on the way back. Hold on, buddy. But now I get the footage and it looks so sissy. I like, like I'm like there was water coming up over the splashing me. I was like all soaked from all the waves splashing over the side of the boat and stuff like this. And then I get the video footage and it's like, yeah, that doesn't look that doesn't look those waves don't look big at all. <laughs> it's like when you're a kid and you do like the jump on your bicycle, like I got ten feet of air and you like you're like I don't think your back tire came off the ground. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, but yeah, we're, we we want to do that. Becca wants to come this time, so maybe we'll get the whole family on the next trip. Oh, hold on. Oh, somebody uh, just had a big one that I. Oh, damn, it's so fast. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, we we know we're missing a lot of people's comments and questions. Uh, something about dog food for bait. Yeah, yeah. There's the old thing that you take a, a can of dog food and chuck it, you punch holes in it, and chuck it in the water. And use that to chum in fish. Uh, I've heard, you know, heard that one a bunch. Hey, you want to sit down in this chair, buddy? Yes, try that. Um, but, you know, of course, you know, that's littering. So we don't want to be throwing tin cans and our garbage and stuff in, in the water. But, you know, you can, um, you know, uh, marginally better is you can you know, put it in a, in a, a bit of sack or something. But, um, but yeah, throwing out dog food that works what i like is feed corn actually go go get for for five to ten dollars you can get a 50 pound bag of dried feed corn okay and just soak it in, in a five gallon bucket okay for a couple days and then chuck that out super cheap fabulous chum okay for catfish and carp i've caught a ton of big catfish on that and of course it's a lot cheaper than dog food so um Okay, let me see if I can find it. Somebody was nice. They did a super chat, and then they even answered somebody else's question during it, and I seem to have lost both of them. No. Um, Becca's frantically trying to look for the nice person who, who used a super chat to donate and answer someone else's question. So Alex Hazlitt, but I'm sorry. Alex Hazlitt. Hats off to you, gone. sir. I'm sorry. I lost Or it. madam. I don't know. Alex? I don't know. I'm sorry. Sir, we're going we're gonna to go on a link. Thank you, though. Um... So, um, cut bait for trout. Cut bait for trout? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, and uh, in Alaska, we used to uh, fly fish for trout using mouse patterns, big, big old mice, and we'd jig it across the water like a drowning mouse, and that big rainbows would come up and just pound it. It was a really fun. If you could catch a single type of fish for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Mmm. I can catch a single type of fish for the rest of my life. Um, Come here, bud. Yes. I don't know. Maybe magic harp. Hi. <laughs> come here, dog. You want to say hi? Yeah, um, come, come, come here, buddy. Help Lindsay, me answer questions. Lindsay Gutner said, "Do you nope. ever fish in North Carolina?" And if so, what's your favorite lake? Um. Well, me. I've only saltwater fished in North Carolina, so I guess my answer would be the Atlantic Ocean. I think Nathan took the Kindle from Jason. Uh oh. <laughs> Did Nathan take your Kindle? Yeah. Oh monster. Yes. Um, fishing in a swift river current. Yes. Uh, fishing in a swift river I'm sorry, I kind of missed the punchline of that. Um Hey Tom, say hello to everyone. Hello. Did you ha did you have fun on our camp out? Oh yeah, it was actually cool. Oh, 
<laughs> what if somebody wants to know about salmon fishing in Florida? <laughs> salmon fishing in Florida. I'm joking. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of like that waterfront property in Arizona. In Alaska, can you use worms to catch salmon? Um, yeah, funny thing, right? I, so, oh, the, the big joke in Alaska was you could always tell a, a, a tourist or a, a, a newbie because they brought worms to fishing in Alaska. Like, very, very few people used worms. And I, they usually didn't even really sell them. Um, but, you know, sometimes I was, uh, those, those sort of mockings uh, blind you to, to opportunities. Um, and last time I went salmon fishing in Alaska, um, we were, we were silver salmon fishing and the guide pulls out like an, like an eight inch, uh, bubble gum, pink, wacky worm and like a big old, huge Senko and he wacky rigs it. And I'm like, what on earth are you doing? I just, I'm like, you can just hear my mind go, you know? And he's like, yeah, we just started doing this kind of like, I don't know, you know, just for the heck of it. And it works really well. And they started reeling in silver salmon and chums on a pink flipping Senko oh, in Alaska. And I was just like, what? You know, so traditionally, no, we use salmon eggs, not worms in Alaska. I mean, I mean, salmon eggs are the worms of Alaska. That's what we, you know, it's everyone uses it. I mean, but you don't see anyone with chicken liver or earthworms. It's all salmon eggs. Um, David Smith wants to know, see, blue cat rolls on top, how do I catch them? And then Fabian Sandoval, hey, we can currently watch you on deployment. I want to say thank you. Wondering when you're going back to Alaska, I was in Homer in 22. Okay, what is the first? The first uh, blue cat rolls on top. How do I catch him? Okay, if a blue blue catfish are on the surface, okay, um, yeah, I would just use a fish under a bobber, you know, and I'd probably I'd be uh, using live bait, you know, because usually when they're busted on the surface like that, they're they're chasing bait fish. So I would get a, a bobber on the surface, and. Uh, and the other one was uh, somebody asked about said they were on, they were on deployment in Homer. The, they're on deployment somewhere. I'm sorry, Mister, but they were at Homer in 2018. You want to know when you're going back to Alaska? Oh, um, I don't know. You know, I got family up in Alaska, so we visit you know at least Three. once every two years. So we were up there not too long Six. ago. Oh, uh, probably next Six. winter. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. It, this is a hard question to answer because if my parents or family are watching this, <laughs> then then I'm locked in. You know, so. Oh, uh, we're gonna, we'll see. <laughs> so, so it's some twins, kids, Ethan and Eric's birthday. So say happy birthday, but then now suddenly it's everybody's birthday. So happy birthday. Happy everybody. birthday, everyone. <laughs> Ethan and Eric and all the, everyone else. <laughs> say happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like everyone wants me to do shout outs. Why are we all shouting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, man, it goes fast. Um, uh -oh. Greater mono for bass. Depends, depends, depends. Uh, and, and really, the question should be fluorocarbon or braid. And, uh, um, but you use you use a fluorocarbon in clear water, in super clear water, and you use fluorocarbon in... Um, uh, yeah, um... With clarity and visibility is an issue, you use fluorocarbon, and uh, generally when snags are a big issue, you use like 60 pound braid or something crazy. Thanks, Ray Trimble. Thank you, Ray Trimble. Thank you, Ray Trimble. I'm like spitting a ton. It's... He said some nice things today. Oh. But I've, I've missed most of them. But thank you, Ray. <laughs> You want down? There's been some foraging questions. So, some foraging? For, foraging. Oh, foraging. And, and foraging, actually. Foraging and foraging. That's true. Oh, we're doing, a, we're going to do an awesome foraging video. Um, we have sarsaparilla trees here in, in the East Coast. And so I really want to do a video where we go out hiking in the woods. It's kind of like hobo style. For a couple days, and we dig up some sarsaparilla roots, and then we brew our own um, uh, root beer out in the woods uh, uh, and drink it. So, but we'll see. Hey, I need, need, need uh, the leaves to come out on the trees just a little bit more. 
And a lot of suggestions of places to fish and camp, like Oregon and Wisconsin and Georgia. Lots of, lots of suggestions of places to go. Oh wait, wait, hold on. James Kirkpatrick, will you do a fishing challenge and <laughs> will you do a fishing challenge against your wife? And then thank you for saying nice things. <laughs> fishing challenge against my wife. Um, I, I I don't know if she if if she'd be willing to do that. Well, let's, Mike, I was once in a, on the board in a, on a, in a salmon derby. That's true. Becca Becca has caught a bigger king salmon than I have and a bigger silver salmon than I have. So I, I, uh, I the question is, will she a, a, a participate, not will she win? Honestly, Mike, I don't know. <laughs> um, a while back, somebody asked why you use... Salmon eggs to catch salmon. Why do you... <laughs> All the parents know why salmon eat their young. <laughs> Am I right, Becca? <laughs> yeah, there might... no. yeah, there's a lot of theories about this. Some people, I've heard people honestly suggest the fish were trying to carry the salmon eggs back up to their stream. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't believe that. I. You know, I just think they eat their babies, just like you know, big catfish eat little catfish, and and uh, big trout eat little trout, and big bass eat little bass. And so, oh, it says be careful with sassafras. They've been taught that the oil from it is a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the FDA doesn't allow uh, using it in certain things, but yeah. So. Um, whoa! Whoa! Do you, wow! Fishing tips on fishing deep, heavy current rivers. Uh, deep current fishing uh, rivers, then try to fish upstream. So try to find a way to get out in the current and fish directly downstream from you. So you're not fighting the current, like you know, anchoring your boat or something like that. Um, otherwise, use really big leads, thin lines, small baits. Um, there's been a few questions about how to fish right now where either either it's been too crowded in fishing spots with people not at work or it's or it's hard to find a spot that's legal to camp and fish. Do you have do you have it's do you have pandemic suggestions? Pandemic suggestions. Just go to the fishing and just like get a runny nose and just start <laughs> coughing and you know right. I, I don't know. I, I don't it, there's no one right answer on how to find a sweet fishing spot. You know, and and uh, you just gotta you just gotta go and look around and, and uh, um, put in the time and energy. And sometimes that just means walking a few dozen yards down the bank from the from the boat ramp. Or you know, I spend a lot of time on Google Maps looking up for locations and stuff, places, and searching in state parks and lakes and stuff. I mean. Every every night I'm on my laptop, either editing videos or doing research for future trips. So, how do you get your wife interested in fishing? <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I don't uh, yeah, about. I don't know if you're talking about my wife or your wife on this one. I don't know anything about your wife, and, and I know only marginally more than about my, mine. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. You know, the be the things Becca Becca and doesn't dislike fishing. She she's just not crazy about it. So she's not going to go in a rainstorm or in the cold or when it's miserable or whatever. But um, you know, so if you know, the thing is, anybody who's not a hardcore fisherman, whether it's your kids or your wife or a friend or something, um, just remember, make it a good experience and worry about catching the fish secondary. You know. Um, and I, I like, <laughs> I do like spending time with Luke and the kids, and so, and and I like things like being outside, and I like, I like watercolor, I like watercolor painting and reading and things, and so sometimes I'll go with them. I won't necessarily fish, but we're still hanging out, yeah. spending time together. It's a little harder with the kids running around, but it's, I like to be with you. Yeah, so, so, so occasionally I'll find like a really pretty little pond. It's just gorgeous, and it's just nice, pleasant weather, and it's a beautiful day. I mean, come with me. It's just gorgeous. I'll pack a picnic lunch, and we just sit there and, yeah. and, and hang out while I fish, you know. Make it, make it a way to spend time together. Yeah, guided fishing trips you know, are often good. Like I, I, when we were in Scotland and we went to Loch Ness, I'm like, I gotta fish Loch Ness. I mean, 
<laughs> you just got to right? And so we got a charter, and and so we got to cruise around Loch Ness on our own private little boat, you know, and and uh, and it was you know miserable weather, but we enjoyed it because it was just gorgeous and it was fun and and uh, it was low key. We enjoyed it. Thanks, Shaw Outdoors. Thank you, Shaw Outdoors, for the. He's he's been catching huge carp in Alabama and be consistent. Power so. to you, brother. Yeah. Um, Hold on a second. Will small cir smaller circle hooks work for bigger catfish? Yeah, yeah. Um, to a point, yes. Um, you can catch big catfish. <laughs> Oh, no. Here, baby, you want me to take care of this? Yeah. Here, I'll hold, hold it. I, we, we just heard this horrible slapping, Some, smacking noise, and now Nathan's crying. You'll shut the door behind you, baby. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think Jacob just assaulted and battered Nathan. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Um, okay, big catfish on little circle hooks. Yes, yes, you can do it. Um, just remember, the smaller the hook, the, the, the shallower it, it purchases into the fish's mouth. So you can tear the hook out easier. It's a, there's a smaller diameter, so it's easier to pull out. It's not as deep. So you can't horse it as much. Um, and, and, and there's other things like, you know, there's that, that plate in the, in the top and bottom lips of, of catfish. And smaller hooks tend to hit that plate. Big hooks loft and hook behind it so uh you know that's so the answer is yes you can totally catch big catfish on tiny hooks you know i've caught them on i think i think uh you know i've caught 20 pounders on number 10s you know little tiny things you know but um but it's you know not ideal you know but you can do it uh do i want to go to ba japan <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh we still want to go we still want to go back to japan so Oh, uh, we're, we're, um, I, I'm actually trying to, to, to push for something next year. We'll, we'll see, but we got, we got to make sure the world doesn't get destroyed in a pandemic first, you know, it's, uh, but yes, we're still going back to Japan. Uh, have you ever fished Lake Erie? No, I haven't. Uh, why don't you do any hunting? Um, I do hunting. I, I post it on my other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. It's mostly squirrels and small game. Um, uh, just because, you know, frankly, uh, you know, here, look, look at my garage. That's just fishing rods over there. And, and over here, I mean, look at all this garbage, right? So I, I, I'm going to get into hunting too. Oh, geez. You know, oh, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, we got to limit the hobbies at some point, but if my kids get older, um, you know, if they get interested in, in hunting, then yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be doing more hunting videos. Um, uh, favorite rod and reel combo? Hey, babe, come back. Oh, I don't know. Um, hey, Mike Chavez, what's up? Good to see you. There are probably other friends on there that I missed. I'm sorry. Oh, it's it's. No, you're doing great, Becca. Here, how about this? Um. Yeah, let's you want to ask some questions for Becca here <laughs> uh -oh. and and I will I will moderate for just a little bit because I know there's some huge Becca fans out there um, uh, Are you getting any work done as a lawyer? No, the courts are closed. I am virtually unemployed and I'm I'm paying to try to keep my employees in, uh, working so basically I am paying money to be a lawyer right now. <laughs> it is costing me a lot of money to be a lawyer <laughs> but uh <laughs> so um let's see luke how did you get so tall it's my mama's fault uh let's see we got a little bit of a hey let's put uh, these are luke questions we'll put no, it no, back. no 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 <laughs> it just froze a little bit we're gonna we, we, we've got a we've got a live stream uh we've got a live stream they hang up where <laughs> they're reconnecting us so oh, Oh. Yeah. So anyway, tell me about yourself, Becca. What's the favorite fishing experience you've ever had? Oh. You know, I really like charters. There's been lots of fun um, charters in Alaska, like um, like the halibut charter or king salmon and silver salmon, ch you know, charters. I like being on the ocean. I get seasick, so I don't love being on the ocean, but... Oh, here's a good one. Becca, what's it like having Luke home all day? 
Well, it's great. He's not home all day because he's trying to be really busy doing videos and things. And so he's been doing a lot of camping and oh, fishing and things. So Comments are going bonkers. There's a lot of people like you that. <laughs> uh, um... So he's really, I mean, I, it's really great having him around more, but he's not really necessarily around more. He's been busy. How, how do you deal with your kids? Uh, I don't know. One just clocked the other one in the head with the toy, so I don't know. I don't know what we are dealing with them. We shut the door. That's how we deal. Yeah. Um, do you worry about the boys when they are out with Luke and his adventures? No, uh, Luke's Luke is a good parent. He's a good dad, and he cares about their safety. I worry just because I worry, but but he's he's a good dad. Um, <laughs> uh, I, someone asked how your back and leg is doing. Oh, that's nice. Um, it's. It's doing a lot better. I still have some issues, but I'm I'm doing a lot better. I can function. I can drive. I can, you know, I'm functional. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. A uh, egomaniac twenty four uh, four seven has been asking about uh, his Nathan battle. Um, <laughs> uh, have you ever? Nathan just had a battle with Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob clocked him in the head real good. <laughs> ever catch some big smallmouth buffalo in Texas? Not yet. <laughs> It's common. Uh, what is Becca's hobbies? Hmm. I like to travel. I like to paint. I like to uh, visit family, um, sightsee, stuff like that. Read, I guess. Um, uh, so, uh, somebody asked if you were going to talk me into getting a minivan. <laughs> no. We, no. I, we, I'm a I'm the van guy in the relationship. Luke, yeah, Luke wanted a minivan. I I kind of pushed us to get one of those SUVs with the third row because it was cheaper and easier to drive. I we tested we test drove a minivan. It just felt really big, and we just have three kids. We can fit them in. We can fit them in a car. Oh, somebody asked who our favorite child was, and it's got to be David, right? Yeah, the fourth one we never speak of. All right. <laughs> Um, David is Jacob's middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Becca should make a, a painting uh, of a fishing painting and like 40 fire emojis. Like it'd be super hot. Oh, I need to paint more. It's been so busy. I haven't, I haven't done as much as I'd like. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe we'll, I've painted several of our fish, like fishing spots where we've been before. Uh, somebody asked how they can make their wife go fishing with them more often. Oh, um, use it as a fun excuse to be together and, and don't necessarily think about it as just fishing, but think about it as a way to spend time with your wife. So maybe, you know, have a comfy chair, maybe bring a picnic, choose a pretty spot. I would she... ask her that question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So, so maybe if, if there's a way you can think about a way to make it as a fun date activity rather than just. Make it about paying attention to her rather than yeah. the fishing. And then, yeah. and if she has a really nice time, if you really step up your game, she has a really nice time, maybe she'll want to go with you more. Uh, James Kirkpatrick, thank you for the donation. Do you ever get mad at Luke for buying more fishing stuff? Thank you both for this video. <laughs> oh. Business expense! Yeah, I can't really get mad at him. It is a business expense. He, we have... Daddy, bring home the sugar. <laughs> Yeah, we have we have like space issues, you know, like there's it's, it's, like, we, we have yeah. too much stuff in general. We have so much yeah, stuff. So there's too many boats and too many fishing rods and too many. He's thinking about getting a storage unit. He probably should. There's too much stuff. Uh, someone said I'm a lucky guy. I'm a I am I'm very blessed. Oh, that's nice. I'm lucky too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. How do I convince my mom to take me fishing more often? Hmm. Go like do something useful around the house. You know? Yeah, that's true. Just, just be like, Mom, if I do all the dishes, clean all the floor, and everything, you know, will you just, you know, take yeah. me fishing? <laughs> yeah, honestly, cleaning up the house would go a long way. Do something nice for it. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> These are good life skills. Good life see, skills. Good yeah. life skills. Honestly. Cleaning up is, it comes a long way. <laughs> it comes a long way. Okay, Outdoor Life 23 is, is going to pop if he doesn't, it, it, it doesn't see us read that we need to go out metal detecting more. I, I got my metal detector oh. repaired, so yeah. Yeah, it's been broken, yeah. Have you ever tried any bow fishing? 
Um, no, but we're doing tons of spear fishing coming up. Which throwing a trident at a fish is as cooler than shooting a bow. I, I, I don't think you should be aiming at me. I think you should be aiming no, no, at me. No, 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 no. You're, you're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You. okay. Have you ever created a painting on the water? Well, yes, actually, we were. Um, we did a video a couple times ago. We were. I have one framed in our house that we were pike fishing in Alaska on that lake. Oh yes, and the tidal basin, and on my birthday. Well, oh yeah. Oh, actually, that was the first time I actually usually reconnecting. Okay, well, I think we're back on. Oh, for some reason, it's pointed at me. You want? That's the person you want to see. <laughs> okay. Oh, I let's... think we have to. It probably opened a new window. Oh uh, well, let's see. I resumed it. Let's oh. let's see if it did. But we're gonna wrap this up here in a little little bit. So, oh, uh, here we go. Let's refresh. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, guys, so get your questions in while we can. We're going to wrap this up here. Um, all righty. Ever gone deer hunting? No, no. Um, Josh Wildlife says he's my biggest fan. How tall are you there, Josh? Because I met a guy that was like 6'8 once, so he was a pretty big fan. So, <laughs> Dad joke. Dad joke. How many boats do I have? <laughs> Just the two. Why do you ask? Too many. Yes, <laughs> too many. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing a pen fishing rod because those jerks keep stealing my videos to advertise their crap products. And I'm not going to give them any more uh, advertising. Um, uh, when I got to do a rematch with Chris Flores, we got to get Chris Flores to fly out here. We were actually planning on going to the Ebro River together to fish, me and Chris, and doing a collab video in Spain. Uh, but his daughter got married, and then the world caught on fire, and and a lot of other, you know, <laughs> pandemics come, and it's all just gone to heck, you know. But um, uh, come fish in Missouri. Um, What's your thoughts on carp snagging? Um, I don't care if you snag fish, if you keep them and eat them, but I, I don't like snagging fish just to snag them. Um, uh, does Becca go with the survival trips? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. She's smart. <laughs> uh, let's see. Show us some Becca paintings. Uh, they're in the other room, and we'd have to go past children. It's yeah, it's complicated. Maybe another time. Ah, uh, Yadav says they're from India. What's up, India? My parents lived in Bangalore for mm -hmm. for a while. So we love we, India. We've yeah. been to southern India and also up north in New Delhi. And, Agra, yeah, New yeah. Delhi and Agra, Bangalore, yeah. Mysore, KGF. Then we went and, and we went to Sri Lanka. Yeah, it was it was really cool. We really liked. Yeah, it. we want to go back when the kids get a little older. We'll go we'll go back to India and then do some fishing in India from a coracle boat. Actually, I want to do a coracle boat build video. He has days. been in a coracle boat, though. Yes. Yeah, but I want to do a fishing video. In a yeah. Uh, Bangladesh. Oh, yeah, I want to go to Bangladesh, too. Yeah. Um, oh, LA River for carp. There's so many places, guys. It's so hard. Uh, cooking and stuff. Greetings from Spain. Buenos dias. Um... Oh boy, uh, carp on fly rods. Yes, I've done it. Well, listen, guys, it's been an hour, fifteen minutes. It's been a, a long live live uh, stream. It's been a pleasure though dealing with everyone, talking with everyone, and and it's been fun to have uh, Becca uh, here with me. And <laughs> and uh, oh, uh, let me get this one, uh, Luke uh, Bar Bradley Carter. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Bradley Carter. We appreciate it, and, and uh, hopefully things will pick up again and here here soon. Um, but at uh, any rate, hey, to be safe. Be safe, guys. Um, guys, and we hope you have a good day and, and uh, stay healthy. And uh, remember, we'll have uh, videos every Saturday morning. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Uh, if you want to leave comments and have these interactions, make sure to... Uh, um, do that on Facebook. And, and if you want to ask me questions, ask in the comments on the Facebook post. It's a lot easier to get a hold of me. 
Hey, the answering the messages is so much more time consuming than answering questions on the comments. And, and so oh, I don't always get to all the, the questions that people email me and stuff. So at any rate, I'd uh, take care guys and uh, have a great day. All right. Doo -doo -doo.